Hello, welcome to the last part, which is going to cover about PDG. You can use it in game engine, but now let's say we want to generate the 16 different versions or even more if you have that available. So we want to make this automated. One of the things that I want to change in my tool, you can even add more properties to again play around with PDG is um, currently for PDG system, I want to control uh, the seed value. So right now we are going to randomly place or select an asset. So this is something that I want to change. So here at the beginning, if you remember, we have all the points, the 16 different points, and then we just randomly pick one. So I want to change that by a switch node. So we want to switch uh, between that basically. So we want to say if it's random or not random. First thing here is we have a blast node that will be replaced. So if we don't use a random one, we will use this blast node, which then has just one, two, three, four, five which we will create a parameter for, like so. So this will be the new data, or we can switch uh, the lines going like so. And we plug it uh, like that. Now you can see that we used this in a spare input. We can see the uh, underlying uh, referencing. Do we want to change that as well? So we're going to our switching or spare inputs with the switch node. So that's the reason why this pair input is quite useful. So we see the link, we can swap quickly swap the link as well. So here we have also this and we can just simply again switch that. So that's why I like to use spare inputs. Now for our tool, let's build a toggle. So let's go to assets tool and go to, in, to our parameters. And at the top, we can maybe do a toggle. By default, we can say that the randomiz randomization is on, so we can leave it at one. We can grab that value here, and we're just gonna call uh, get random, and then we use this as a toggle, of course. Uh, give you the option to just randomly select, or if we disable this toggle, we will manually select. Now, to manually select one, we can then grab an integer, grab it over here, and then say. Uh, like specific specific number so i'm just going to call this number to reference that over here let's use uh, the channel references so i would like to get the channel uh, which is called uh, we call it just number and uh, close it off like that we want to specify that it's points data and we want to probably inverse it so we have number probably number zero i think here by default so yeah so number zero so this should be uh, number one or number zero. So now if I look at my tool, uh, we can now get the option to get random or no random. We can always use the function if you want to improve this a bit more uh, to hide uh, this. So here inputs. So when we have uh, random enabled, we can either disable or hide the menu. So let's use for example, disable we can say that if input equals to uh, zero, then this is disabled and let's copy paste this code, paste it over here and switch that to one. So that's it. And we're going to PDG now. So with PDG, I will use a number and I will just, each time we run a PDG setup, we just increase it by one. Now for the PDG setup itself, we can make a new top network. So that's what PDG is called in Houdini top networks or task networks and we go in here we're going to create a wedge this is just defining about how many times we want to make an asset or how many assets we want we're going to use the labs one and in my case i know that i have 16 different values or names for stores so i want to ask 16 different models from here in a moment i will make more attributes so if we now just generate this here we will now have 16 different uh, cooking items or working items we can then plug that into a system, into our HDA processing system, so HDA processor. And in here, we can then start to process a HDA. So we basically made an HDA, so that's what I'm going to do. So in settings, we can reference here an HDA file. Now we can also access our parameters, like you can see here, it's the same parameter interface that we had from uh, our HDA that we just made. You can see that some of the elements, like the hiding, will not work. Uh, so that's just a PDG thing where it doesn't allow to do any specific hiding 
because it just shows everything so you can literally control everything in case that is needed further down here we probably want to just double check if everything is uh correctly uh, set up here so we want to output a new asset so when this starts to calculate or cook we will output a new asset so pgg will store uh, here like sort of like a cache file with the data that was made so you can leave it on like defaults like this and the only thing that we want to do is uh, create control these values so let's go back to the wedge node and let's make a couple values so we probably want to have like i think two values so let's click on this plus icon. Let's create one for size uh, X and one for size uh, Y or height. And let's open both of them. We can go back to a random range or random sampling range. Same here for, for those. So they will both now get a random value from zero to one. So each time there is a green dot, there will be a zero to one value. So I can quickly cook this. And if I double click on the green dot, you can see they will now have a random 0 to 1 range here. So they're both in the same seat. So if I offset the seat and recook, you will now have different values. So uh, we want to control the minimum and maximum, of course. Um, I already sort of like tested this out a bit beforehand. So I know that my minimum value of my add tool or my board should be 1.5 and my maximum should be around 3. Same here for the Y, so let's say 1.5 and 2. So those are what I would roughly take as sizes. That's created. We can again need to cook this so the data is actually stored in these uh, attributes. And we can simply now uh, use those attributes in here or length and height. We can just simply say add size X and add size y and as you can see uh, we have now these values so if i change the green dot uh, there will be different values so 2.2 1.7 so they are just changing in values now for the specific number one we want to disable get random and uh, we want to specifically target number one two three four five and so on so we want to incrementally increase this and we're going to just use uh, here the wedge index count so here we just said um, so here if I go back we can just say add size x so we can do the same here for wedge count so we can just say add wedge uh, or index this will return a number like four so you can just reference this number by typing add and that's basically almost done so we are ready to uh, right click on this and start cooking so can just uh, cook now this is now ready they cooked all of them so they have a green values so that means that they all succeeded if you want to quickly preview them there are a few ways on doing that we can right click and we can say view work item and in a moment we have a new within window and it will show that item or the geometry so that's a quick way of viewing that another way is uh, placing here a new geometry node and let's say preview and we're going to use a labs imports uh, pdg item and that will also like preview the same element so that's a quick way of doing that now i'm actually going to use that node to uh, export my values so i can now build an fbx exporter so here fbx export there are a few things that we need to do so i'm going to say which type or what type of geometry to export which is uh, my preview uh, geometry so i'm going to click accept you can give it a different name and then we have here our output file so let's set this to my board my ad board or sign board and then we need to give this a certain number so we're going to again use the edge uh, wet uh, index so we're using that wedge index again uh, to define the name so if i click middle mouse you can see the full name so it will be zero one two three four five up to 16. then there are some other values we can maybe disable ascii format we can enable uh, unit scaling if that's uh, useful in other software so that's the basic that we need to set and what i would prefer uh, to do here as well is my work item it's currently viewing the output of my current node 
But if I would be uh, rendering or calculating the export node, this doesn't do anything. This just renders something out. So we need to set the node here to uh, input. So we'll view the input from a node and not the output from a node. So here uh, on the FBX node, we will get the input data, which is the HTA data. So if I now would right click and uh, cook this, we can now uh, start seeing the FBX files coming up in a second. So you can see that they all appeared here in my folder. I did not a good job of a folder structure. So I just have them all over here. I could have maybe made a better uh, thing by making an additional folder for the geometry outputs. But I have everything here. So if I click on the first one that we made, so it's going to be the same one uh, here. So it's going to be the same one that we had in Houdini. So they're now just exported as FBX files. So this is just a quick way of getting these all in FBX files. So we can drag and drop this into Unreal or another package or do something other with them. We just have them now as FBX formats, which is usually what we prefer and is easy to work with if we need to do something else with them or send, send them to an artist for checking or modifying. Uh, we can just quickly add them. So that was it for this tutorial series. So I showed you a bit of PGG. We can also do a JSON files as well. So we can import data from a JSON. So if you're uh, making, again, uh, using ChatGPT to make a JSON file. We can also use uh, the JSON notes to read that file as well. So there are many, many ways of now doing different approaches on this project, but the base setup uh, would be this, where we have a simple HDA reading the JSON file, and then we have PDG uh, using that same data to then make something like this. So I hope you enjoyed the series. Thanks for watching.